Okay, so let us continue with uh, our uh, discussion of uh, uh, what we have been calling second quantized uh, formulation of many particle systems. So, basically uh, the first quantized approach involves uh, expressing uh, various operators in terms of uh, operators that we are uh, familiar with from elementary quantum mechanics such as uh, position and momentum. Whereas, the second quantized uh, approach uh, basically rewrites these uh, uh, formulas in terms of creation and annihilation operators where those creation and annihilation operators encode the statistics uh, of the underlying particles in the system. So, if you have a system of many fermions then the creation and annihilation operators obey canonical anti commutation rules whereas, uh, when the system is composed of bosons they obey canonical commutation rules. So, uh, so, if you recall that um, I started off with this definition of uh, in the last class I, I actually ended with this definition of the density the local density of uh, particles. So, if you have a bunch of particles the density of particle at position r is naturally defined like this because you know if you have a discrete number of particles from 1 to n. So, you know the density is 0 unless you are at the location of the particle. So, that is the reason why there is a delta function here and then you sum over all the locations of the particle and that gives you the local density. So, similarly you can define current which is basically uh, defined in terms of uh, the you know what current is it is basically I mean it is just, it's just the flux per unit time ok. So, in other words uh, uh, dimensionally it has the uh, uh, idea of uh, velocity. Uh, so, it is like this. So, but then remember that uh, this would be the current and remember that because uh, we want this to be self adjoint we are going to write this in this Hermitian form. Okay, so, this is where I had stopped last class where I this is the first quantized or the you know the traditional way of thinking about uh, these quantities these operators. Uh, these are operators because in quantum mechanics r i is the position operator for the ith particle and p i is the momentum operator and then you see you know that x i commutator p x i is or p x j is basically i h bar times Kronecker i j. So, in that sense uh, these these are indeed operators and so rho and j will not commute because uh, you know rho does not have a p in it whereas uh, j has a p in it whereas rho has an r in it or x y z basically and uh, there is p x p y p z in j. So, you do not expect rho and j to commute. All right, so um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make the following assertion that this is it's possible to write these two formulas in the second quantized language, and it turns out that it's exceedingly simple to write down. I mean, it's it it has a very simple form, namely this. Well, this is a vector. So, it has an uh, exceedingly simple form. So, I am going to first write it down and then I am going to prove it ok. So, um, so this is how it works. So, So, you see uh, these two are identical I mean these two are absolutely identical. Okay. So, this is the uh, th these two uh, ways of doing it would be the first quantized or traditional way of doing uh, of expressing the density and current in terms of momentum and position 
whereas uh, this this approach is uh, the creation annihilation way of representing the same quantities. So, now I, I have to prove this and remember how I have been proving this. So, these are operators uh, that act on many particle wave functions. So, I have to first assume that there is such a wave function uh, and then I act it on the many particle wave function and all I have to do is show that regardless of what this is. So, for a general many particle wave function the action of rho on this such a wave function is identical to the action of this rho on the same wave function. So, similarly for the current j. So, I am going to prove this now. So, remember that uh, C of r acting on uh, uh, if it is properly let us assume it is you start off with something properly symmetrized or anti symmetrized as the case may be. Uh, then uh, you know that uh, I am allowed to do this. Uh, so, square root of n because then you know you are annihilating. So, you will be picking up the square root of n and then uh, all you are doing is basically getting rid of uh, one particle and the last one is gotten rid of. In other words, you are you are forcing that r n to you are freezing the value of r n to r. So, now you see uh, having done this it this is still anti symmetric under the exchange of r 1, r 2 and so on or, or symmetric depending upon the value of this small s here. So, uh, so this is properly symmetrized. So, now I am going to uh, create a particle you know on this new state. So, I will le let me call this uh, uh, psi 1 s. So, I am going to uh, create a new particle on this. So, this would be nothing but uh, C dagger R C R acting on psi s. So, now this is going to be if I create a particle you see the n minus 1 particle. So, I have to add one more particle, but then when I do that I have to uh, it will be square root of however many particles there are plus 1. So, now there are n minus 1 particles. So, it is going to be n minus 1 plus 1 and square root of that. So, that is basically another square root of n. So, there was already a square root of n here. So, those two get multiplied and you get an n and then uh, you will have to add a particle. So, uh, remember here um, there are only n minus 1 particles. So, um, adding a particle implies that I have to add the nth particle back again. So, I had annihilated the nth particle so I have to put that back in. And of course, uh, when I do that uh, I will end up messing with the symmetrization. So, I will have to uh, properly symmetrize it ok. So, I will have to do that. So, I, uh, first I am going to uh, let me first add uh, the particle uh, and a nth particle. Uh, again at location r. Now, uh, well I have to kind of uh, do this, I have to take the permutation of all these uh, particles you know and sum over all the permutation then I have to put an s raised to this then I put an n factorial. Well, that is however many particles there are. So, that is going to be my density. Okay. So, let us let us work this out I mean it is it is little bit uh, tricky to uh, appreciate this when there are so many particles. So, let us do this uh, assume that you start off with uh, say a two particle uh, system a one particle uh, wave function is a bit too simplistic. So, I am going to start off with let us assume capital N is 2 ok. So, if it is 2 then it is easy to see what is going on. So, then C dagger R C R acting on psi s with r 1 and r 2 only is going to be. So, remember that uh, if there are only 2 of them this is going to be just 1. So, it is a 2 over 2 factorial um, which is exactly 1 and then it is the sum over the permutation of um, 2 objects and um, psi s there is going to be the permutation of. So, if n is 2 there is going to be a permutation of 1 
and r and delta of r permutation of the second one minus r. So, how do you permute? Uh, so, there are only two permutations. So, um, so you either do this So, if P 1 is 1 and P 2 is 2, so that is basically the, uh, the original uh, unpermuted form. So, that mod P is uh, 0 there. So, it is it's going to be basically 1 in that case. So, in the other case it is going to be S because if I interchange it is going to be S. So, S R 2 R this is going to be delta of R. Um, this is going to be delta of r 1 minus r. So, that is going to be my density. Uh, this is in the second quantized language. So, now I am going to see if this is the same as what you would get if I had uh, thought of rho as. Uh, uh, so, this was the rho in second quantized language remember. So, but then the traditional way of thinking of rho is basically this for two particles right. So, now let us see if this has the same effect of by when you act it on a two particle system or two. So, you see the answer is yes. Uh, so, it is going to be psi of s acting on uh, if for the first term it is going to look like um, r 1 becomes r this becomes r 2 and then you get a delta of r minus r 1 and then the other term is uh, r 2 becomes r whereas r 1 remains as it is. Okay, so, uh, so that is the effect of uh, the density operator written in the traditional way acting on the two particle wave function. Now, I have to convince myself that uh, this is the same as uh, what I have here. It is indeed the same because remember that uh, these two, uh, so these two differ by a factor of s and s squared is 1, s squared is 1 because s is either 1 or minus 1. So, these two are the uh, differ by a factor of s. So, this is also equal to s psi of s r 2 r delta of r minus r 1 plus psi of s r 1 r delta of r minus r 2. So, you are done. Well, this is through an example of course, but you could prove it for the general case. So, I will leave that to you as you know you could do that by induction or any other method that you are comfortable with. Okay, so, I am going to leave that to you as an exercise to try at home. So, uh, so, the point is that um, the uh, density operator in the second quantized uh, formulation has this form. I mean just I want you to appreciate the simplicity of this, uh, this uh, way of looking at the density. See if you look at the density um, that is written out in the conventional way, it has a huge number of variables. So, it starts off with r 1, r 2 all the way up to r n. So, there are n number of variables where n could be macroscopically large. However, all that complexity is hidden when you uh, decide to write the density in terms of the creation and annihilation operators where um, uh, all those uh, uh, the complexity or the information about the size of the system is uh, subsumed into the definition of the creation and annihilation operators. So, that is the simplicity of this approach which enables you to do that and not only that uh, the, uh, the statistics of the particles that make up the system are also encoded in these operators themselves. Whereas, in the conventional way of doing things the statistics of the particles are, are is not apparent in the operators. It comes from the wave functions, it has to be imposed on the wave functions. Whereas, here it is already apparent uh, because it is encoded in the uh, way in which you define your creation and annihilation operators. So, you can do the same thing for current. So, let me do that for current. This is my expression for current here. So, I am going to see if I can do the same thing for current. 
so let me do the traditional way of doing it first. So, so remember that uh, in the P and R language or the position momentum way of doing things that uh, the current operator is defined in this fashion. Uh, this is the current density at location R for a system of n particles. Well, in the conventional way of doing things, it is um, it's not obvious from here whether the underlying particles are bosons or fermions and basically I have to uh, specify that uh, by um, examining the statistics of the wave functions uh, that come along with this these operators. So, now let me examine. So, notice that uh, P i is nothing but minus i h bar grad i. So, this is in conventional quantum mechanics that is how you choose to represent the momentum operator. So, now uh, let me go ahead and uh, examine the action of. Uh, so, I am going to restrict myself to two particles again. So, I have two particles and then I uh, examine the action of the current density operator on a wave function of two particles. Uh, okay, let me work this out. So, if you work this out, uh, how does this come about? So, you see uh, on the one hand it is this. So, if I look at the first term, it is um, 1 to 2. So, if you expand this out, how does this look like? So, if it is i is 1, that means a 1 is being forced to be r. So, it is minus i h, h power by 2 m del i acting on, uh, well it also acts on, um, well I am going to start with 1. Okay, so that is how it looks like and uh, the other terms are exactly the same except that the momentum is to the extreme right. Okay, so let us work this out and you see uh, this, um, this term forces R1 to become R. So, I am going to um, delete that R1 there and then this term forces R2 to become R. So, I am going to delete R2 there and uh, so you see um, this uh, has a derivative on R2. Okay, I am going to leave it at this because uh, it is not clear uh, if uh, further simplification is warranted because remember that all I want to show is that this is the same as um, you know if, if I choose to define. Um, so, this is the uh, the second quantized version would be uh, minus i h bar by 2 m uh, you know c dagger r del r c r plus i h bar y. So, 
so it's uh, without the m there. So the question is, is this uh, the same as uh, this? Uh, I mean, I'm just going to give you some uh, a sketch of the proof. Uh, you can fill in the details later yourself. So you see, just just stare at this term. How does this look like? Uh, if you look at C dagger R uh, grad C R. So if you act this on uh, uh, if you act this on psi R one R two, what's that going to look like? This is going to annihilate a particle. It's already properly symmetrized, so it could an annihilate one or the other. So it's going to be del R. Uh, so, I am going to annihilate the last one uh, as is the custom. So, then uh, you see once I do this then I will be forced to add a particle, but then uh, firstly I will have to put a square root of 2 because uh, that is what it is and then when I add a particle there is another square root of 2 so the whole thing goes twice and I am um, going to add a particle. So, that is going to be a grad r psi s r 1 r. So, I am going to add a particle r 2 minus r, but then I have to permute. Um, so, if it is r 1 r 2, but then if it is the other way around, well the permutation would be uh, with an s del r psi s r, r 2 r um, del of r 1 minus r. So, remember that you know I can always rewrite this as twice this plus uh, just the density. It is more like this, it comes from this. So, this term is similar to that. Okay, so, the reason is because uh, R1 is forced to be R. So, so this, is, this is going to become R. So, because of this, this R1 becomes forced to be R and uh, so I can uh, delete. So, this, this term is R2 is forced to be R. So, I can just uh, get rid of this put r there ok. So, now you stare at this that uh, apart from this factor of 2. So, if, if I take a, a minus i h bar by 2 I will get uh, the 2's cancel, but then you see the similar term comes from here also because I can take this grad uh, act, act it on this or I can choose to act it on this. So, when it when the grad acts on this ok. Well, I should keep this as 1, then you will see that it, it gets added up. So, that 2 cancels out basically. So, I will allow you to work out the current part yourself, it is a little bit tedious, but you will see that it works out. So, finally, this term is going to look like this and so that is going to effectively verify the claim that these two formulas are absolutely identical. Okay. Um, well, perhaps without this m. Okay. So, think of this as without the m because uh, see dimensionally what is this? Uh, this is uh, density times uh, h bar k, so which is momentum. So, yeah, it is without the m. Okay. So, now, now it is going to work out. So, without the m these two are equal. Okay. So, uh, so once you have convinced yourself of this, then you can also uh, uh, show that uh, the densities and currents obey a certain just like. So, remember that uh, the uh, creation and annihilation operators obeyed uh, this type of commutation rules uh, uh, de, uh, you know s commutation rules depending upon whether uh, s is plus 1 or minus 1. So, remember that uh, a commutator b with subscript small s is basically a b minus s times b a. So, if s is plus 1 uh, you are talking about bosons, if s is minus 1 you are talking about fermions. So, s is plus 1 it is bosons, if s is minus 1 it is fermions. Okay. So, you see it so happens that uh, once you um, construct currents and densities in terms of the c's and c daggers, you will be able to convince yourself allow you to do that as an exercise as well. But keep in mind that I am not going to test you in the examinations or the any of the tests or tutorials on any of these topics uh, which I have classified as advanced topics. 
because strictly speaking it is not part of statistical mechanics, but I am just teaching it to you because it is a natural continuation of uh, you know where we are going to actually uh, leave the course. Uh, so, it is going to, uh, so the, the natural next step is exactly what I have been teaching you. So, it is a natural continuation and it is something that you should pick up on your own. So, it so happens that um, you can also uh, convince yourself that these rows and j's you know obey uh, certain commutation rules uh, the conventional commutation. So, if I do not have a subscript it means uh, if I do not write anything below here it really always means this a b minus b a. So, in other words if I do not write anything I necessarily mean a b with a plus 1 there. So, that means the bosonic commutator it is just the commutator the traditional not the anti commutator. So, it is either a commutator or an anti commutator. So, if I do not specify it is always means a commutator. So, uh, so you see uh, it is going to uh, obey these types of rules. So, it is going to you can convince yourself that it obeys. So, the rho and j they are commutators they are conventional commutators not anti commutators just commutators uh, regardless of whether the underlying particles are bosons or fermions the simple commutator is expressible also in terms of rows and j's. So, this is what is known as current algebra ok. So, uh, so, this is called current algebra and this is very important uh, you know for the study of uh, many topics in many body theory specifically what is called bosonization which I am not going to discuss at all in this course. So, I am going to uh, tell you what all these symbols mean. So, just uh, please be patient. Uh, I am going to tell you what this means shortly. Okay, so, what does all this mean? Uh, firstly, this is uh, this is obvious what it means. This is uh, just the density you take the density regardless of whether they are bosons or fermions you just take the density take the density at some other point they commute. So, in other words what does that mean uh, physically it just means that uh, you can measure the densities of particles simultaneously at uh, two different points and uh, you know it uh, the measurements commute that means if you measure the density at a point first and measure the density of the system at another location but at the same time yeah, you would not get a different state if you interchange the order in which you make the measurements. However, that is not true when you are dealing with density and current. So, when you are dealing with density and current, density and current do not commute, but however, their commutator is expressible in terms of densities and currents, specifically in terms of this density here. And here, uh, J A refers to the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, ath component of uh, see the unit vector in the a direction whatever that is. So, uh, so that is what that is the symbol. So, if I take uh, you know if I write this I really mean this uh, uh, you know some in some b direction. So, whatever it is that uh, these these types of commutators are uh, going to come out in this fashion the uh, eighth co uh, component of the current density at location r uh, when you are find the commutator of that with the um, bth uh, component 
of uh, the current density at location r dash, the commutator uh, is going to be also expressible in terms of uh, in this case only currents. So, in this case it was density, it is going to be currents. So, uh, so this is what is known as uh, current algebra. So, this is called current algebra. Of course, it should be called density current algebra specifically, but it is called current algebra because density can be thought of as the time component of a 4 vector. So, it is like a 4 current rho and j together is like a 4 current and uh, so in that sense it is called current algebra. So, I am going to stop this course right here. Uh, so, so, what are the conclusions? What have we learnt from this course? So, what we have learnt basically in this course is uh, we have learnt the, that statistical mechanics is the study of uh, uh, systems with large number of particles, whether the underlying uh, uh, particles obey quantum mechanics or classical mechanics, it is possible to take into account the detailed dynamics of the underlying uh, particles and uh, predict the properties of the macroscopic systems. So, in other words, the macroscopic properties of large systems can be linked to the microscopic properties through these ideas. So, also uh, we do that by not by necessarily solving the detailed dynamical equations for large number of particles since that is uh, not practical. We do that in a clever way in this course in statistical mechanics by sidestepping those ideas by uh, averaging over a whole, whole number of microstates and uh, as a result we will be able to uh, compute the average macroscopic behavior of uh, systems uh, with large number of uh, particles or subsystems. So, we were also successful in showing that the average is the whole story uh, so long as the system sizes are huge. So, the fluctuations are suppressed uh, as that is one of the important uh, conclusions of this course. And uh, so, as a result we were up able to apply uh, such ideas to a whole bunch of uh, you know a vast diversity of systems uh, that are found in nature you know uh, right from uh, Fermi gases, Bose gases and classical uh, you know ideal gas and Van der Waals fluid and even you know magnets uh, like ferromagnets and uh, paramagnets and we were able to discuss uh, you know Landau diamagnetism. But then we were also able to apply it to uh, the other extreme namely astrophysical bodies like black holes and white dwarfs and so on. So, we have done wonders in this course that we have studied uh, you know subatomic uh, structures using statistical mechanics like uh, you know electrons in a metal all the way up to you know the, uh, the degenerate Fermi gas in a white dwarf or we have studied the thermodynamics of black holes and uh, we have talked about polymers in the examples. So, we have done lots in this course and uh, I hope you enjoyed this course and uh, you found it informative and uh, it is. Uh, so, if you take this course seriously, do the, all the problems and uh, you know attempt the examination seriously, uh, you will be well equipped uh, to uh, be uh, to have a successful career in physics uh, at an advanced level. So, I thank you for uh, registering for this course and uh, listening to all my lectures. I hope you found them enjoyable. Uh, thank you and bye bye.